The Edmonton Oilers pull off the impossible in Boston, putting the rest of the NHL on notice. All that much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, the Edmonton Oilers pulled off what no other team the NHL has. So far this year, we will talk about the massive win against the Bruins in just a second. But also on today's episode, the Oilers head to Toronto for another massive matchup all in a span of two weeks. The Edmonton Oilers playing the Bruins twice, the Leafs twice, and the Jets. And could they walk away with a more impressive record than people may expect? We will talk about that a little later on. And we will wrap up with the good, the bad, and the ugly from the game against the Bruins. As we do after every Oilers game. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Alrighty, a massive 3-2 victory for the Edmonton Oilers against the Boston Bruins after going down 2-0 after 20 minutes in Boston and normally actually always in the NHL up until last night. That was a recipe for disaster for the away team. The Boston Bruins undefeated in regulation when leading after 20 minutes. When leading after 40 minutes, when leading after, well, scoring the first goal. If you score the first goal, you're going to be leading the game anyways. However, after last night, you can put a one in the regulation loss column as the Edmonton Oilers pull off a 3-2 victory in Boston. The exact same score as the reverse fixture last time these two teams met. The first game of uh, Matthias Ekholm's career as an Edmonton Oiler that came on March 1st. And the Edmonton Oilers in this one come out on the right side of the scoreline. They did it all without a point from Connor McDavid. As I'm sure you've heard, snapped an 11-game point streak for him. Uh, very, very impressive that the Edmonton Oilers are able to do it without Connor McDavid but also, for the most part, without Leon Dreisaitl getting a secondary assist on the game-winning goal from Darnell Nurse. There are some people uh, commenting on Twitter saying, I mean, that doesn't really count, does it? Uh, for me personally, this is very much situational. But uh, when you get a secondary assist, that means you, you're basically setting up the setup guy uh you have uh, an extra vision obviously uh um circumstantial but very important for the Edmonton Oilers regardless to pull off this victory without a Connor McDavid point and basically a Leon Dreisaitl point. Evan Bouchard, Ryan McLeod, and Darnell Nurse getting the game winner, but all those three players scoring a goal. Evan Bouchard snapping a 43-game goalless streak Goal is drought is probably the better way to put this. Uh, but And that's exactly the way the Edmonton Oilers would prefer to win it. Now, the Edmonton Oilers, with this win, shows that they can win in any way. And yes, it's, it's one win. You can sit there and go, oh, it's one win, blah, blah, blah. But you can go back from the start of the season where the Edmonton Oilers have been fantastic, or not the start of the season, excuse me, since the start of the year, since the start of 2023, uh, where the Edmonton Oilers have been fantastic. You can even shorten it even more and go from when we came back from the All-Star break. The Edmonton Oilers have been one of the best teams in the NHL, and a lot of people like to point at, oh, they play the San Jose Sharks, they play the Anaheim Ducks. Well, over the last two weeks, the Edmonton Oilers have played the Boston Bruins, beat them and lost to them by a one goal a, a, a one goal difference about to play the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs for the second time in the same amount of time after getting a 5-2 victory and then 
They went up in a home and home against the Winnipeg Jets. Yes, you can say, oh, they're in a slump, but they weren't really. They were kind of just getting to the state that they're in now. A big win at home and then a back and forth 7-5 game. And the only game where the Edmonton Oilers have allowed more than three goals since Matias Ekholm's uh, debut with the Edmonton Oilers. Now, of course, we can sit here and go, it's been a, a small sample size with Matthias Ekholm. But Matthias Ekholm, honestly, I sit there and go, that guy is the Edmonton Oilers' number one defenseman. And what he has done with Evan Bouchard, him getting that goal, really shows the importance of Matthias Ekholm. And I think Edmonton Oilers fans are starting to see it as well. This was a coming out game for a lot of Edmonton Oilers and obviously not named Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. Stuart Skinner had a tough start to that game. You had people on Twitter going, oh, uh, if you want to be a serious team, you got to have the Oilers are a goaltender away from this, that, and the other thing. Every goaltender in the league allows a goal like that. Now the second goal, late in the first period, well, the last shot of the game, or last shot of the period, excuse me, uh, that was a tough one right through the bread basket after giving up the puck behind the net. That's something, you, that that's on Stuart Skinner, the mistake behind the net, the mistake on the shot. But after that, Stuart Skinner was fantastic. 18 saves on all 18 shots fired towards him in the final 40 minutes. 26 saves on 28 shots helped the Edmonton Oilers improve to 36, 22, and 8 on the year. In the Edmonton Oilers' statement win on the season. This win has told the rest of the league that you can shut down Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. That's fine. Then you have to worry about Devin Shore or Derek Ryan or Ryan McLeod or Warren Fogle or Ryan Nugent Hopkins or Matthias Janmark. You can go down that list. We didn't even get to Darnell Nurse, Evan Bouchard, Cody Cece, heck, Vinny DeHarnay. You want to hear the expected goal percentage for the Edmonton Oilers? The leaders for the Edmonton Oilers in expected goal percentage last night Devin Shore was first at an 80.58, then Derek Ryan at 79.81, then Ryan McLeod at a 68.1, and then Vincent DeHarnay, a 62.6. Those are your top four players, and then you get to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Then on the flip side, Brett Kulak and Vinny DeHarnay, we'll keep talking about DeHarnay and Kulak, or De DeHarnay, excuse me, but DeHarnay with Kulak last night had a .277 expected goals against the best amongst all the Edmonton Oilers defensemen with 11 minutes and 24 seconds played against or, uh, between each other. That is how the Edmonton Oilers put the rest of the NHL on notice could over a span of 24 hours the Edmonton Oilers potentially not only become the favorite out of the west but one of if not outside of the Boston Bruins the favorite for the Stanley Cup again again I know there are going to be tons of people going it's just one win just one win those people haven't been watching the Edmonton Oilers Easy as that. A massive win for the Edmonton Oilers. It wasn't easy then, and it won't be easy tomorrow as the Edmonton Oilers head off to Toronto for a hockey night in Canada battle for all hockey night in Canada battles. The Edmonton Oilers and the Toronto Maple Leafs. We will preview that game in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss out on your chance to get your no-sweat 
first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That is fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Alrighty, moving on to tomorrow night as the Edmonton Oilers head to Toronto for a massive matchup against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, this is the second game between the two teams in 10 days. As the last time these two teams played on March 1st, the Edmonton Oilers came away with a massive 5-2 victory in what was, up until probably last night, Potentially the Edmonton Oilers' best game of the season. The first game with Matias Ekholm in the lineup, the Edmonton Oilers looked like a brand new team with him out there. And the Edmonton Oilers looked inspired. Now they head to Toronto after their biggest game or their biggest win of the season and riding a massive high, this is going to be a big game for the Oilers. However, a quick recap from the last time these two played, as mentioned, 5-2 for the Oilers in that one. Connor McDavid uh, getting two goals in that one, for including his 51st and his 52nd. Leon Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins getting uh, the assist on the first one. Costin and Hyman in the second one. Hyman also chipping in with the third goal of the first period for the Oilers with assist from Matthias Ekholm with his first assist as an Edmonton Oiler in his first game. And Connor McDavid, I think that's a pretty nice welcome for Matthias Ekholm. Uh, Kyler Yamamoto had a beautiful tip-in goal as well as the Edmonton Oilers were looking like they were starting to let the game slip away the uh, not necessarily slip away but the uh the Leafs were starting to became 3-2 at that point the Edmonton Oilers did not let the Leafs back into it then Clem Costin before it all was uh b- before even the third period I should say Clem Costin made it 5-1 for the Oilers the 5-2 it was just a little bit of a cherry on top for the uh Toronto Maple Leafs but The Edmonton Oilers go into this game with that win, but still against a pretty confident group. Coming off a big win in their last game, same night as the Edmonton Oilers as well. So they're coming off of a high as well. 39-17-8 on the season. The Edmonton Oilers and the Leafs very comparable on the year. They are second in the Atlantic Division right now. Everybody has expected them and uh, Tampa Bay to play in the first uh, series of the playoff. Uh, It's basically confirmed at this point. But here's where the two are, are very similar. The goals for per game, the Edmonton Oilers sit first. The Leafs in ninth with a 3.38. Then the power play, third best in the NHL for the Toronto Maple Leafs at a 25.4. Obviously, the Edmonton Oilers in first in the NHL on pace to be second best of all time. I think they're still going to get first, but either way. Then the tides change a little bit, at least season-wide. The goals against per game sat at a 2.66 for the Leafs, uh, which is sixth best in the NHL, and their penalty kill sits at an 81.2, 13th best in the NHL. The Edmonton Oilers... Well, bottom in the goals against, or one of the bottom teams in the goals against, and one of the worst teams in the penalty kill season long. However, the last few games for the Edmonton Oilers, more specifically the last five games for the Edmonton Oilers, have been much better defensively. They look like a totally different team in their own end, and the likes of the Boston Bruins in the last 40 minutes of that game were unable to solve that defense. The Edmonton Oilers are a different team. However, there was one thing that I found was missing against the Boston Bruins that I think would severely benefit the Edmonton Oilers against the Boston Bruins. And that is Clem Costin. Didn't you notice that there was a couple of runs by the Boston Bruins on guys like even Matthias Ekholm? There were some hits on uh, uh, Zach Hyman as well. And you're sitting there going... Well, DeHarnay tries to hit people, and DeHarnay does hit people. I'm not saying he doesn't hit people. But when DeHarnay takes a hit at somebody, people go, oh, it's a hit to the head because the guy he hit is six foot one, and he's six foot seven, and naturally the guy's head is at his nipples, and you go, well, pfft, there's nothing he can do. 
Saint, Matias Ekholm, last game against the Bruins, six hits, very, very noticeable, but you don't want him out of play or out of the uh, the equation for stepping up to make a hit. Not saying he ever does that, but just saying in general. Same with Darnell Nurse. Don't want to pull him out of position just for a big hit or to get gritty. Clem Costin would have been perfect for that game last night. Perfect for that game last night. But where does he fit in? Which is a fantastic thing for the Edmonton Oilers. Then on top of it, they can still add Dylan Holloway by the end of the month. But the Oilers went into that game with uh, Evander Kane, McDavid, uh, Hyman, Nugent Hopkins, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, Fogel, Bukestad, and Yanmark, Shore, McLeod, Ryan. Shore, McLeod, Ryan, where you sit there and go, okay, maybe it makes sense to take out maybe a Shore or Ryan. They have been the Edmonton Oilers' best line over the last couple of games. So it's pretty tough to break them up. You're not going to take out Matthias Janmark. He's a very good penalty killer and very underrated with the uh, with the puck. He is such a fantastic skater as well. Um, or not fantastic. I shouldn't say fantastic. He's a very underrated uh, skater. Uh, sometimes I sit there and go, who the heck is this guy? And it's, it's Matthias Janmark. I don't know where you can take anybody out of that lineup. Great thing to have. But what would you do? I, I just wanted to spit that out there to see what uh, other people think. Uh, would you put Costin in there? Would you go with the same lineup that just beat the best team in the NHL? You let me know. Uh, seems like Stuart Skinner is most likely to start for the Edmonton Oilers tomorrow night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. That was a lot of S's. But either way, we are unsure as to who will start for the Leafs. Probably Samsonov or Samsonov. Sorry, it's Samsonov, not Samsonov. I should know that. Sergei Samsonov was an Oiler. Either way, that uh, game goes tomorrow night. Puck drop at 5 o'clock. I was going to say 6 o'clock. 5 o'clock here in Edmonton. The Games in Toronto, but five o'clock here in Edmonton. Let's wrap up today's episode with the good, the bad, and the ugly from last night's game against the Boston Bruins. We will get to that in just a second. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode with the good, the bad, and the ugly from last night's game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Boston Bruins, starting off with the good. We talked about it already at length, but it's the depth. The Edmonton Oilers won that game without a point from Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, and the Edmonton Oilers proved that they can win games in numerous ways. And I'm not just talking about the guys who scored goals. I'm talking about Cody Cece, who got an assist in that game. Devin Shore, who set up that uh, game-tying goal for Ryan McLeod. Matthias Janmark also getting an assist on the game as well. The Edmonton Oilers got points from guys that have not been on the score sheet for quite a while and have gotten or, or, or also won without guys getting on the score sheet who have been on the score sheet quite often recently. So that's a big win for the Oilers. But I'm not just talking about those guys either. I'm talking about Stuart Skinner. Massive, massive response by Stuart Skinner in the second and third period. After a, a difficult first period, you can sit there and go, you, you want that first goal back. You, you want the second goal back. But all you can do after that is respond. And that is exactly what he did. He's going to get... Uh, uh, gifted with the start tomorrow as well. So I, I think it's it's exactly what the Oilers need, but it's exactly what Stuart Skinner needs as well. Just continually proving why he, A, is the starting goalie for the Edmonton Oilers. B, also got that contract from the Edmonton Oilers earlier this year. But C, not only is he the starting goaltender, but the goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. All due respect to Jack uh, Campbell, I have more trust in Campbell right now than more people do, and that was a totally different story in the summer. Either way, it's not about him, it's about Stuart Skinner. Massive, massive game for the depth of the Edmonton Oilers, including Stuart Skinner. So the good in that game, the depth. The bad being, okay, listen. Before you, you start spewing off, the bad was the officiating. Okay, get your size out now. And I, I again, I, I completely understand 
officiating in any sport is one of the most difficult jobs out there. I don't understand how a holding call on uh, Zach Hyman is even close to being called in the first period. That holding or interfere, I don't even know what they called on Evander Kane in, uh, later on in that first period as well as Dmitry Orlov forgot how to skate. You sit here and you go, you're, you have the Edmonton Oilers with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and a new look back line where, with, with Matthias Ekholm back there. And this might be a preview of the Stanley Cup Finals. Then why are we seeing idiotic calls in the first period that A, aren't going to be called for the rest of the game, so you're not even setting a precedent, but B... Why are we looking at your face when everybody in the free world who wanted to watch this game came for Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Brad Marchand, David Pasternak, Patrice Bergeron? At no point did I mention any of the referees' names. It's just really disappointing when you get a game like that. And yes, after that, it was... Relatively good. After the first period, there were no penalties for uh, the Boston Bruins or no power plays for the Boston Bruins and only one power play for the Edmonton Oilers. Fair enough. I'll give them that. But those penalties were just straight out bad. And it's really uh, a sad trend we're seeing. So I just wanted to get that out there. In a game that you didn't see a lot of bad Maybe you could also uh, uh, put that in there. But the ugly, let's wrap up on the ugly, and that was the first period. And I'm saying we're going to wrap up on a good note on the ugly with the first period because, yes, the ugly was the first period, and not the, the Edmonton Oilers themselves. The Edmonton Oilers drove the play for, honestly, the entire game, but specifically that first period. The first few shifts for the Oilers were fantastic. And then the weak goal by Skinner, by Brad, or scored by Brad Marchand on the first shot of the game. You sit there and you go, come on. You just came out so strong. You look like the better team. And now you're losing. How? How does that work? And then you're going into the intermission. You're going, okay, down one, that's doable. And then that goal with Pasternak happens, makes it six or uh, six three. My goodness, it was not six three. Makes it two nothing at uh, uh, heading into the break, and you're sitting there going, "What the heck just happened?" But this is why I say it's going to be a positive note. After that, that was a wake up call for the Edmonton Oilers, saying, "You know what? You had people. You have Tyler Remchuk from Oilers Nation tweeting. Well, this is a write off of a game. That's that's great. That's really good for a team who's supposed to be a contender." He came out in the second and third period and proved why everybody's sitting here tonight or last night watching this game, going, "This could be a Stanley Cup final preview," and it almost brings tears to my eyes when I hear people going. Well, if the Oilers can play like that, then yes, it is. This is a serious, serious team. So, the ugly being the first period, but it turned into something beautiful. So, the good, the bad, and the ugly from last night's game. The good being the depth as the Oilers getting goals from Bouchard, McLeod, and Nurse. No points from Connor McDavid and a secondary assist from Leon Dreisaitl, 18 saves on 18 shots in the second and third period from Stuart Skinner, shutting down the Boston Bruins. The bad being the officiating, especially in the first period, specifically in the first period. After that, they were pretty solid, but why? Why were most of those uh, called? And the ugly the first period that turned into a beautiful, beautiful thing. We shall see if the Edmonton Oilers can continue this nice little run as they head over to Toronto. Not against the Toronto Rock, but against the Toronto Maple Leafs as it's Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews facing off against each other. Let's be real. We all are coming for Connor McDavid, not for Austin Matthews. Either way, 5 o'clock puck drop tomorrow in Toronto. Hopefully, at the end of that one, we can all play La Bamba, baby.